Auntie Jessica here, and I'm here to highlight one of our Makerspace items. Do you know that we have all of these awesome Makerspace items that you can borrow here at the library? Um, we have telescopes and cake pans, and I'm here today to talk to you about one of my personal favorite Makerspace items that we have to borrow, and it's a sewing machine. And I love to sew. I make a lot of my own clothing. And I know sometimes it can be pretty intimidating to get this, take this home and to figure out how to take it out of the box. So I thought I would make a video to give some information and to hopefully make it less intimidating. So let's get started. We've got this box here. It's this real heavy duty box to protect our sewing machine and open it up by unclipping them comes off and I'm just going to put that aside and inside the box here we've got a book that has some it's called sewing basic simple techniques and projects for first-time sewers put that aside too we've got the foot pedal this is very important right now it's neatly coiled up so I'm going to uncoil it we've got this bag that has the Quick reference guide. This little box here has the bobbins and some tools. So when we hand sew, we use a needle and one piece of thread usually, but when we use one of these sewing machines, we use two pieces of thread. It has a top thread and it has a bottom thread that gets put in here. Show you that. This is a box of top threads. So we've got a little sewing toolkit and it's got some essentials like pins and some sewing machine needles and it's got scissors here that these are fabric scissors and that means that they're only supposed to be used on fabric because if you use sewing machine scissors on something else like paper or cardboard it can really dull the blades and make cutting fabric really difficult so we ask you to please use our scissors just for cutting fabric this is a seam ripper and this becomes helpful if you make a mistake and need to take out your stitches, which we all do that. So next we can take the sewing machine out of this box. We don't want to sew with it in the box. This is just to hold everything and to be protective. So we take it out. I'm going to turn it around just so you can see what it looks like from the front. So when you're sitting at the sewing machine, this is what you will be looking at. So I've taken the sewing machine out of the box and I've unwrapped the foot pedal and then it just needs to be plugged in here and then the other end gets plugged into the wall. And then this is what we are looking at. I've just put the other end of the foot pedal, which this over here acts a little bit like an accelerator of the car. So when you press down with your foot, it makes the, uh, the motor run. So the harder that you push it down, the faster it goes. And you turn the sewing machine on once it's plugged in with this switch here. And you can see there's a, just a tiny light that went on and it helps, it helps you be able to see what you're working on a little bit better. Now for now, we're going to keep the machine off because you should always thread the sewing machine with the sewing machine off. So I've got my top threads here. Normally, if I am sewing, I will try to choose a color that might blend in or complement the fabric that I'm using. In this little box here, we have our bobbin threads. So our top thread goes here, and our bobbin thread, which is our bottom thread, is going to go down here. And I've got these little tiny spools here that someone has already threaded. So when you're threading your machine, you want to make sure the hand reel, or here, there's a little ridge and you want that pointed up. And you pull up the thread holder and you put your spool of top thread on the thread holder. And there are little diagrams on the machine to help remind you of this. So you slide your thread through that piece. Let's see that again. Get through that one clip and you follow the numbers down goes down number two, around 
the tension reel number three and then back up. Now you want to go to the right of that little clip and then to the left and it heads right down. Here's a little close up of it. This clip over here that I pointed to, you want to be to the right of it and then go around it to the left and you can see that number four. There's a bar that you need to get the thread around next. So you go from right to left. I'll show you a close up of that. My pencil is pointing to that little metal bar. And we go from the right side of the bar to the left and then pull that through. Then we'll thread our needle. We go from the front of the machine towards the back through the eye or the little hole of the needle. And once we get that through, we pull a few inches so there's a tail. <coughs> to install our top loading drop-in bobbin, we first remove the bobbin cover and we take our thread and we want it to be shaped like a P. Not like this, I call that the nine. This is a P or the thread winds around counterclockwise and we drop it in and then we look for this little bar, which is our tension and we want to bring our thread to feed behind that little bar from right to left. Next, we need to draw our bottom thread up. So we hold with our left hand the top thread, which is the purple thread in this case, and we use our right hand to turn one rotation of the hand wheel, and that pulls onto the bottom thread, the bobbin, and then you can use a pencil or something else sharp to grab it and then I'm just re replacing the cover. Let's see that again. So I'm holding with my left hand the top thread, using my right hand to turn the hand wheel one rotation and it draws up the bobbin thread and then I just use something to pull the threads through and pull them towards the back. Then replace the bobbin cover. This is the tension dial. Usually it can be set at around four. This is my stitch selection dial. The menu of the stitches is on the right. I've chosen a straight stitch. Now you're ready to try sewing. I've got my fabric and I put my presser foot down and I like to line up the edge of my fabric with my presser foot and I gently press the foot pedal. I go a few stitches forwards and then to go backwards, I hold down that reverse lever. I do a few stitches backwards and that's a locking stitch. That's like tying a knot. And then I'm just going to stitch straight, keeping being sure to keep my fingers out of the way. I reach the end of the fabric. I do a few stitches backwards again by holding down that reverse lever. And I do another locking stitch by going backwards. I can sew right off the end of the fabric and lift up my presser foot with that lever in the back again right there. There's a thread cutter on the left side of the sewing machine or you can use your scissors to cut the threads. If you accidentally pop the foot off or if you do it intentionally, it's easy to put it back on. Just line it up underneath that little bar. Use your lever and click it down and it should clamp onto that foot. <coughs> if you should need to wind your bobbin, you put your thread on the spool holder and go from front to back of that little disc, wrapping it around. Take your bobbin and insert the thread from the inside through the little hole outside. You put the bobbin with the thread up onto the bobbin holder and you firmly snap it to the right. Hold onto the thread and then press the foot pedal to start winding the bobbin. Keep an eye on it and if it winds underneath it, start again. After about five seconds, you can cut the end about a half an inch. Keep pressing the foot pedal and once it is all the way full, it will automatically stop.
And that was a little introduction on how to open up your sewing machine box, set it up, and how to start sewing. And I hope you take this opportunity to borrow one of our sewing machines and really have fun with it and try things out. And if you ever have any questions, I'm always happy to answer and to help you get through any problems that you might have. Until next time, bye!